Hi, I'm Piers Corley, and I'm here to talk to you about panning and the importance of having panning in your life and in your loops. I'm going to start by playing an overdubbed loop that I just recorded, and halfway through, I'm going to press a button, and <clears throat> it should be really apparent that I've pressed the button. At least I hope it is. So you need, you really want headphones in for this. It's because it's to do with stereo, so. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. And we'll all hang on behind. Did you notice it? I certainly did. What happened was, um, as I recorded that, um, I have a special gadget, which I'll show you and how it works, um, set up, which changed the, pl the place at which the sound was recorded in the loop. And we started by listening to it in mono mode and then went into full stereo so you could hear the difference. And um, that's shown you why you might want to do that. You know, you could hear the high harmony and the low harmony spread across the stereo field and how that makes it sound more like there's a lot of people, really. So that's that's essentially what I'm going to show you how to use. To make this work, you need a, a, a plugin called MyRack and uh, you're going to need a preset file, which you can download from my website. And if you look down in the description, there will be links to an App Store link for uh, MyRack and a link to my preset for it as well. And that will... Um, that will get you up and running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how you can set up your own projects at the beginnings of how you might want to set up your own projects to use this um, uh, plugin and, and preset. And then, um, if you're still with me, I'm going to go into more detail as to how that plugin and preset works. So let's start with, it's not quite an empty thing, but it's... Um, it's, 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 it's I'm back. I've just deleted a whole chunk of the video that I was trying to edit because it's incoherent and goes into too much detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first, we're going to go through the process of setting up the um, random pan, pandomizer, whatever you want to call it, um, in a simple project that you'll be able to take that and use it in your own projects. And um, in a second video, I'm going to show you how the random pan system works by building it for you from scratch and explaining each step. But um, yeah, there's epic amounts of stuff and we just want to treat it as a black box here. So over there we have a view of our um, very very simple Loopy Pro, Pro template. I've set up um, a little um, dial here which is going to eventually reflect the balance of where we're recording. Uh, we've got a button here not not plugged into anything yet which um, we pressed to randomize the pan and a reset to reset our state back to the beginning. So let's go through what we need to do. There is a link down there to um, MyRack which is the plugin that we're using for this. MyRack is a full modular synthesizer emulator and you can do so much more with it. But for our purposes, we're just using it to mess with the pan. And um, the preset file, which there will be a link, there's a link to my website uh, with the preset file for you to download as a zip file. You unzip it and drop it in the MyRack folder and uh, all manner of things will be well. You can go from there. So let's start then by, because we have we tap on the mixer view and we've got all this set up and we can add. So we're tapping on the plus button. We're adding MIDI. And the MIDI we're adding is just MyRack. So you tap on that to open MyRack. 
and we're going to go to that little four squares there button to open an existing patch and the patch we're after is called Pandem Sec. You've downloaded it. It's big, it's complicated. In the next video I'll explain what all this is doing. But for now, let's just be aware of what we want it to do. So, it's controlled by um, the audio uh, AU3s have parameters that can be configured and this is configured so that when parameter 1 goes to 100% we turn on the random pan and when it goes back to 0 we turn off the random pan and advance to the next random pan that we want. And when parameter 2 goes high, we reset the state of the random pan. And so it goes back to the beginning of the sequence of the steps. So it's going to go left, right, and so on. And that's kind of all you need to know. And it does this by sending CC10 on channel 1. And CC10 is the MIDI pan standard. OK, so... In order to, first of all, set it up so that we've got a pandemizer happening, let's go to the uh, pencil. Let me just shrink that so we've got more of the thing visible to you. And we're going to tap on the pandemizer. I'm going to use press release because on press, because uh, for this, I've got it, I'm having it treating it almost like a piano key. So you, while you're holding it down, the pan is random. And when you let go, the pan is not random, OK? So we're going to um, look for MIDI... Para adjust, we're choosing Adjust MIDI AU Parameter. Yeah. And the target we're after is my rack, and that's parameter 1. And we're choosing toggle value, which is correct. And we want the on value to be 100%. And we want the off value to be 0%. And that's that. OK. And we want reset. You can probably guess what's going to happen here. Um, again, we have it as uh, uh, acting like a piano key with an on and off because we don't want to leave the reset set thing latched to 100%. So again, sending it to my rack, but this time we're choosing parameter 2 and it's going between 100% and 0. And I promise you that's working. We'll see more later. I'm using this for live performance. And in live performance, I want my live vocal to always sound in the center, in, in, in the center, right? But I want, when I'm recording it into the, into clips, you know, these things, then I want its balance to be adjusted, but only in the recording. While I'm recording, I'm sounding in the centre, so people watching my streams can always hear live me, unless I deliberately don't want them to hear live me at all. If you don't care about that, we can set it up so that we're just changing the balance of the input. So we go to uh, Control Settings, and we are looking for... We are looking for... Um, the current project's default setting. We're adding a new binding and it's going to be an audio source and it's going to set a parameter. The easiest thing to start typing is parameter. Um, we're going to uh, audio source parameter. We're going to adjust the audio unit. We're just going to, sorry, going to adjust the parameter. The parameter we're going to adjust is balance. It's going to be adjusted continuously and the default settings are fine. And we want it to bind to uh, my rack. I've uh, got two my racks. We might be uh, in a have a problem here, but we'll we'll soon find out. And we're going to channel 10, pan position course, and we want it continuous, not on and off, and we don't need it to be relative. And we can save that. And that and close that. So now, if you watch this little balance label here, and we press Pandemizer, I 
I'm using the wrong MyRack. Sometimes Loopy gets confused, but we can fix that if you have this same situation. Sorry. Um, ah, also, the problem is not that. I forgot to set, hit the target. Leaving that in. These things happen. But don't worry, we can debug and we can fix. So now watch the balance and let's see if that's right. Yes. And also you will hear that I am now away to the left and I am now in the middle on the right and I am now in the middle on the left and then I'm panning somewhere randomly and then I'm panning there to the left randomly and then I'm panning somewhere really hard right and then I'm panning somewhere really hard left and it's just weird. But that's, that's why I don't like it because I'm hearing it in my ears while I'm monitoring and that's... I could fix the routing. So... What do we really want to happen? We want, we want to sort of like, if we look at um, in more detail here, you look at what's happening. The destinations of our input source are uh, both going to uh, one and two, i.e. the master out, which is where you're hearing me, but also it's being sent to the colours. Uh, orange here, we've only got orange. And what we'd really like to do is to split things so we can set the balance only on the bit that's going to the colours. And we can do that. And we do that by adding a send. And we're creating a new bus. And we'll just check by holding on it that the send is after all effects. Yes, yeah, so when we mute, when we do anything to our source, that will be reflected in the send. And we're going to also just move this... Um, just going to move this, planning on moving this, usually I can move this, I'm moving the wrong thing, <laughs> going to move this so it's on the sort of input side. We've, You might have buses that you're using for effects and things like that and they're sort of downstream of the um, of the colours and you might have things that you're using for up effects that are upstream of the colours, right? So, uh, and we're going to send to this, we're going to send, we're going to send 100% to the bus and you might have just noticed I've got slightly louder and um, phasing slightly and that's because the bus is going to one and two as well. And actually, we want the bus not to go to our colours, all our colours, and we don't want it going to the output. OK, so now what we've done is we've split. Well, we haven't quite split yet, because now what's going to happen is we're going to have the same problem with the audio going to the colours twice that we have. And we'll have it once in the centre and once panned. Not good. So we go back to here and we say... Our input channel is not going to go anywhere but to our monitoring, to, to 1 and 2. So now we've essentially routed our audio. So 1 is going straight through live, unaffected by pan, uh, unaffected by any effects we might put on it, to the ears of the people watching. And the second is going via the bus into the orange clips. So what we kind of want to do now is to um, adjust our MIDI binding. Remember, we've got currently, when we press that, it's adjusting the live input and we don't really want it doing that. So if we go to our control settings and we go to current project default, adjust import balance, and we're going to delete that and we're going to add a new action and this time we're adjusting it's now a bus action but it's still a parameter um, and we are looking for bus actions which is down at the bottom and this time we are targeting bus A one day we'll be able to name buses and that will be awesome and we are making it the balance and it's adjusted continuously and it's that's all right because we've not changed anything else and it's still bound to my rack cc10 
So now when we hold the pen, you, this is the, watch these balances again. Now when I press and hold pandemize, what's happening is the balance is changing, but only on the bus that's going to the colors, yeah? Okay, um, and what I'm also going to do is just quickly set this so the on value change, it adjusts the bus parameter. It adjusts the bus parameter. This is, you can see why I prefer to type in because scrolling is just too much. Bus A, balance. Okay. So now finish that. And now when we, um, let's reset. Now when we press and hold, we can see the balance changing. Easy squeezy lemon peasy. Yeah. Now we've got a button and that button would let us um, do things like uh, let's record and we'll roll the old chariot along, we'll roll the old chariot along, we'll roll the old chariot along, and we'll all hang on behind. And then because we want it to pan, and we'll all hang on behind, and, and we'll roll the old chariot along, we'll roll the old chariot along, we'll roll the chariot along and we'll all hang on behind and we'll all hang on behind and we'll roll the old chariot along we'll roll the old chariot along we'll roll the old chariot along and we'll all hang on behind so now we've got and we'll roll the old Chariot along, and you can we'll hear roll the old out on chariot along, we'll roll the old. So that's um, that's a start, but it's not exactly pleasing to do, is it? You just want to um, you just want to press a thing and have it automatically start. So what we do is we make use of one of Loopy Pro's great. Uh, features and that is a follow action. So this is this is merely scratching the surface, by the way, of what you can do with follow actions. I have a video upcoming about my uh, performance, my actual performance setup, and that does some uh, quite clever things with song forms, so that when I'm doing um, uh, shanty like where, where there's a there's a call and response and then a chorus, the call and response and the chorus associated with a verse are all panned on the same pan that time and then panned later but there's a video coming up about all that and how you achieve that but this is just basic just to get you started on what's going on so we're going to uh clip settings that the global clip settings in this particular case and what we're interested in when i get there are the follow actions and um whoops i managed to leave some there but we'll we'll deal with that i'll not bother thing so there are potential places where you could add this um begin record and end record because we're going to turn it on at the beginning of the record and turn it off at the end of the record obviously um are fine if you want your panning to start when you make your first recording. Now, if you sat and tweaked the patch so that the very first time through it's panned to the centre, that's you might want to choose that. And, and it makes it easier to set up, but that's not what I've done. But thinking about it, it wouldn't be a stupid way of working. Um, begin initial record is it, you'd only get the pan on the clip that you recorded. That's not really great either, is it? Um, um, so what we want is when we start overdubbing and we finish overdubbing. These these have got added um, relatively recently, but they're brilliant additions. Being able to distinguish between the initial recording and the overdubbing. 
thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. You're a bloody genius and, and we owe you. So let's go and look at begin overdub and we add and we're adjusting a bus parameter, aren't we? So let's type param and choose adjust parameter for the bus. And the bus we want is bus A. Actually, no, it's not, is it? I, I'm i messing up again. What we want is the MIDI parameter that we're changing. We're sending a MIDI message. Or we're sending a MIDI, we're changing the MIDI parameter on a, on a, a MIDI AU. So adjust MIDI parameter. And our target is MyRack and it's parameter one, remember? And we are setting that to 100%. So we are turning the pandemizer on as we start recording. Now, uh, it's easier to hold duplicate and then choose reorder and drag than it is to go through all that full up palaver again. But we do need to change this so that instead of sending 100, we're sending zero. So we're turning it off again. Yeah, and that's all there is to it, really. So now let's um, reset that. And we might want to so the first recording. Watch, 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 watch the um, watch the pan here. I've placed the mouse over it. Heal your ho, boys. Let her go, boys. Bring her head round into the weather. Heal your ho, boys. Let her go, boys. Sailing homeward to mingle. Heal your ho, boys. Let her go, boys. Bring to the weather, heal your ho, boys, let her go, boys, sailing homeward to Mingle heal your ho, boys, let her go, boys, bring her head round into the weather, heal your ho. Let her go, boys, sailing homeward to Mingle Not the sweetest harmony you've ever heard, but now when we listen to that... Heal ya ho, boys, let her go, boys. You can hear the harmonies are panned out to the edge, panned out to the edges, and the, the, there's a sense of multiple people singing. I mean, they're all the same voice, so it's, it's multiple me's, but you take my point. And that's kind of all there is to it. After this, you can do whatever you like and keep your eye open for uh, the video I'll be releasing later of how this all works and another video which I'll be linking to, you know, you'll, you'll see links to them here eventually. Um, showing how it works in how I use it in a quite complicated, complex setup um, to uh, reduce my possibility of pilot errors. Uh, that's all upcoming. And thank you for sticking with me. If you want to be no, if you want to be informed about those, then please um, click like, click subscribe, and hit the notification thing, and you will get told when the next videos in this series are coming up. Um, I'm hoping to release at least one a week for the next couple of weeks with associated files so you'll be able to download the project file that I use and have a, you know, take it apart yourself. Um, so thank you very much and thank you to my uh, Kofi supporters, particularly uh, Merlin Madgower who is a top tier um, Kofi subscriber and um, you're more than welcome, if you find this of value, to go and visit Kofi and drop some money in the hat. And um, I'm not going to stop you, because it's a free world. But don't in any way feel obliged. The thing you could do if, you, if, you, if you've enjoyed this, if you've found it useful, and you don't have money to throw at Kofi, and in these times, who does? It's really good 
if you can add a comment. It really is. It just positive feedback or even negative feedback, really. Um, engagement from people who who are responding to what I'm doing. The, 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 the comments are a great place for me at the moment. Um, um, I have few enough subscribers that I can keep up and it really lifts the spirit of small creators like me when you see people commenting on your work it's people will say oh yes it pleases the algorithm and all that kind of it, no forget that it pleases the creator if you see especially a small creator on YouTube making something that you value comment I promise you if you comment and say something nice about the thing that you value and tell the person who made it that you value it, you will put a spring in their step for the day. They really will. It's the most... It's a real... It's just magic. It's just feedback. It's just... It's why... It's why YouTube's great. It's why YouTube's not broadcast and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm blethering on and being all fuzzy and stuff, and I don't care. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you at the next one. Lift up your hearts, Emmanuel's friends, and taste the pleasure Jesus sends. Let nothing cause you to delay, but hasten in the good old way. For I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul, and I know I have, I feel I have a sweet hope of glory. Glory in my soul. Our conflicts here, though great they be, shall not prevent our victory if we but strive and march and pray like soldiers in the good old way. And I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul, and I know I have, I feel I have. I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. Though Satan may his powers employ our happiness for to destroy, yet never fear we'll gain the day by marching in the good old way. And I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. And I know I have, I feel I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. Ye valiant souls for heaven contend, remember, glory is at the end, our God will wipe our tears away when we have run the good old way. And I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul, I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul, and I know I have, I feel I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. In my soul, and far beyond this mortal shore, we'll meet with those who have gone before and shout to think we've gained the day by marching in the good old way. And I have a sweet hope of glory in the soul, I have a sweet hope of glory, and I know I have, I feel I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. Yes, I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. I have a sweet hope of glory, and I know I have, I feel I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul. <laughs> Spot the, um, accidental mistake? I certainly did. Bye.